All right, hey guys, we are uh, back for another uh, one of our alumni uh, interviews, which, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of feedback. Guys really love these things, and, and I personally love it. I think it's uh, keeping me a little bit sane uh, talking to some of our alumni and, and being able to kind of chat a little bit about baseball. But, you know, I think if uh, any of our current players can take one thing out of these things, I think it's well worth it to do. Um, so we're going to continue to do them. And uh, the, the guy that we have here today is uh, Logan Schmidt. Uh, Logan played with us uh, a couple years back. He was a uh, 2017 high school grad. Uh, he went to uh, Miami of Ohio, and he's currently a junior there. Um, he's a right-handed pitcher, 6'4", 208 pounds. Um, coming out of high school at Plainfield East, he was ranked uh, number 95th in the state by PBR. Um, Logan um, kind of had some ups and downs his first couple of years in Miami, Ohio, in terms of actually getting out and seeing a lot of time on the mound. Uh, but this, this year, currently as a junior, before everything got shut down, um, you know, he was playing a huge role for them. Um, and he appeared in uh, five games already that, that beginning of the year, uh, was two and one record wise. And he had struck out 17 guys in 15 innings. And that also included three Ks um, in two innings pitch against Texas A&M. So uh, pitched against some big boys and, uh, you know, has done really well so far. Um, Logan, um, for just a little background on, on what I think of him as a person, um, you know, I, I don't know if I've, I've met a guy that has more perseverance um, than him. Um, there's never been one time that I heard Logan ever complain about anything, uh, even those first couple of years where he wasn't getting a lot of time on the mound. Um, never complained, never heard anything negative from him, and he just kind of, kind of continued to work. And um, I think those things are, are, are really showing now on that perseverance. So I, I'm really proud of him and, and continue to kind of hopefully see him kind of grow and, and, and prosper over there at Miami, Ohio. But Logs, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So the first question, obviously, um, we always ask is, how are you kind of handling this coronavirus deal? And um, obviously, you had a, a really good start to the season, and everything kind of got cut short, and now you're back home. And, and kind of how are you dealing with it? What are you doing at home to kind of get yourself ready for um, whether it's, you know, uh, summer ball or even for next year or anything like that? Yeah, that's the funky thing is um, it's just everything has been changing so fast. It's kind of hard to keep up. It's kind of right now it's just throw when I can't throw in the basement, throw into a net, throw to Gavin. I got to do whatever I can. And we got a little bit of a rack downstairs. So it's just doing the, the minimal stuff, kind of finding a way just to keep the body going. And I don't really even know what I'm doing this summer yet because of all the crazy changes. So it's kind of just trying to keep my body in the best shape possible for when we do find out what's going to happen at the end of all of this stuff. So Logan just brought up his brother Gavin. So he's got a uh, he's got a, a a younger brother who's a junior. Currently plays for Rhino Baseball as well. Um, you know, if I uh, during this this interview, if I mix Logan and Gavin up, trust me, I, I think I've done it a million times um, since I've known the family. But uh, um, I'm going to ask you this question right off the bat. I was going to wait till the end. Um, who's going to be better uh, at the end of the day, you or your brother, when it's all said and done? Who's going to be a better pitcher? He could be, but I think I will be. Okay, that, that's that's uh, that's the older brother response. I I, I was yeah. expecting to hear from you. So both uh, both have pitchers, and looking forward to Gavin's future as well. But um, back to the questions. So Miami of Ohio was was your dream school. Right. Um, it was on the number one on on, on your list. Um, it's always where you wanted to go. How did it kind of come about that it, they ended up seeing you? Um, how was it that um, they came about that they ended up saying, hey, yeah, you have a spot here? Kind of run us through that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, so I was a sophomore. I visited campus. At that time, I didn't even think about playing baseball. Like, baseball wasn't even a thing. I thought I was, I mean, good enough at the time to do. So that was somewhere I, I went there. I was like, man, I really could see myself going here. Like, this place is awesome. Like, it's all I want in a school. Um, and then baseball kind of came around. Um, was able to reach out to them, show them a couple of videos that they seemed to like, and then went to a camp, which I think camps are huge. Um, went to a camp, they saw me there. They were interested, didn't fully love me, and then they saw me and then in Jupiter with the uh, with in Jupiter with that tournament. Threw really well four innings and a really good game. They offered me a, a spot. I wasn't too happy with it at the time. Feel was still a little down, and then I threw the later my senior fall. I threw at a Cangelosi camp. Popped like 88 or 89, got the offer I really liked, and all is history from there. So, yeah, you, you bring up the whole camp thing, and, um, you know, we really stress for our players all the time that, 
you know, that, that cam thing is huge. Um, you know, especially with the, especially with the younger recruiting happening, um, you know, but, but also with the NCAA rules, not allowing guys to go out there technically and see them all that often. You know, I think going to camps kills multiple birds with one stone, you know, Absolutely. one, you, you're forcing yourself to really be seen in front of these schools um, and these coaches you get to actually interact with these coaches and actually see how they are as a, as a coaching staff. And if you're actually going to um, enjoy being around them or enjoy their coaching, because we talk about it all the time that it's important. You're, you're with these guys for the next four years. Um, and then you get to obviously get to see the campus and get a feel for the school as well. So, um, you know, for a, a single camp, you, you really get a lot of, a lot out of it, I guess. And I think Absolutely. it's really important for players that to, to really focus in on that and, and maybe pick their top five schools and make sure that they're going to those kind of camps. Right. And I think even like from working them at school, like you can definitely stand out and make an impact just from like being a polite person or like just doing something that stands out just to in the back of the coach's head. Like, yeah, that's that's a kid I remember. Instead of, and if you're going to go, you got to do things like that. Otherwise, you're kind of just wasting your time. Sure. Sure. So tell me a little bit about now that you've kind of experienced college life, you've been through it a little bit, um, both the baseball side and academic side. What what's the biggest difference between high school, whether it's baseball, academics and now that you're in, at the college level? Um, I think the biggest difference is just the consistency and the level of talent. Like in high school, you'd run into teams or you run into guys where you just knew like you're way better than this person. And in college, I mean, that rarely, rarely, rarely happens. Like, we would, we played in Purdue Fort Wayne earlier this year, and like they were what, third worst team in the country last year. I mean, they still had guys that if you left the ball in the middle of the plate, they were going to hit it hard. So, like, I think it's not like high school in that sense. I think it's just the amount of work that you have to put it on your own to get better is so much different. Because in high school, if you're good, you do the basics, you stay good, and you're probably the top. If you're good going into college and you don't do the extra stuff, you're going to get left behind 100 times out of 100. I think that's by far the biggest difference is the amount of work it takes to not just, like, have some success, but to stay at the top of your game. And with school, I mean, it's, it's a completely different world. You're finally on your own. You don't have your parents telling you to do homework all the time. you got to plan your time out, especially with playing, because the first couple months doesn't seem like a lot until your first round of exams come and you feel super unprepared and then, kind of just a catch up and you can't let that happen and you really got to plan out your time and find a way that works for you because it's not the same for everybody now does that get easier obviously as you know from freshman to sophomore to junior year where you almost kind of get in a groove of things and figure out okay I, I know how much time I have for for this between games or on the road or at the airport I mean does it become a little easier as you go absolutely I mean you because you kind of know like okay if I do this or we have this today kind of get into and it kind of goes every year. It's kind of a new thing. You'll have new practice schedules and whatever. But right. as you get it, you kind of just got to find something that works and stick to it. Because when, if you don't, you try and just go by the uh, – just go by it whenever it comes up. It's never going to work out well. Right. So we kind of touched base your first two years there. Um, I think in all, I think you ended up – let me uh, look at this real quick if I, if I wrote it down. I think you ended up only throwing um, – maybe he had two appearances, um, something like that, um, over the first two years, or it was a few appearances, right? Like four or something, yeah. Something four like appearances over total over the first two years, and then this past year as a junior, um, you really started to kind of come into your own. How was that mentality that you had those first two years when it was a little bit of a struggle and maybe you weren't getting out there as much? Um, did you ever feel like, hey, I'm going to quit? D did you ever feel like, man, maybe I'm not at this level? Um, what was your mindset and, and kind of how'd you work out of it, I guess, and, and get to the point now where you were a, a huge uh, part of that whole uh, bullpen there? Um, I think especially freshman year, there was definitely thoughts like towards the end of the year, like, man, is this, is this really worth it? Like putting in all this work to not even, I mean, I wasn't even traveling my freshman year. Um, yeah, there were definitely those thoughts, but then it kind of creeped in like, well, I'm here. This, I have this opportunity. I'm not going to waste it. And I kind of, push myself to the brink to the point where I had to make the decision, am I going to keep going or am I going to quit? And I just kind of felt, I fell in love with the game more than just being on the field. I fell in love with like being with the teammates, being the practices were then enjoyable. Like I kind of changed my entire mentality of you don't need to play to enjoy the game kind of thing. And I think that was huge for me. And then going into sophomore year, I mean, I started, I had a really good first outing and then kind of went downhill from there. But I, I think it was the same, like, hard work mentality. I was, I was convinced I wasn't going to let anybody on the team beat me. I had, I had really good talks with my coaches. who showed, they, they had confidence in me, but they just 
kind of, I wasn't there yet. I knew I wasn't there yet. And I knew I was going to work until I was either there or I couldn't work any harder. And finally, I mean, this year, as the numbers kind of show, it's starting to pay off. But I, I definitely don't think I'm to the point where I'm ready to be, like, complacent yet. Right. So, you know, Dylan Sykovics, who did one of these earlier, he mentioned the same thing. You know, he's a freshman at the D1 level at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And, you know, he, he mentioned that that relationship that he had with the coaches kind of always continued to push him, even though he struggled his first two outings, continuing to give him the baseball, continuing to work with him. Um, and he said that that just made a world of difference. Um, just being able to have that confidence in your coaching staff that they actually have that confidence in you. And, and, and that's what we always talk about finding that, that right coaching staff that, that you guys both have, you know, as a player, you have that relationship with the coaches and it's vice versa. Those coaches have to have those relationships with the players as well. Absolutely.